tonight on Hunter. Prison authorities say Cooley took his own life. Was that the, uh, the same Douglas Cooley that you prosecuted? It was one of my last cases before I became a judge. You've been spending a lot of time with this fellow. You like him? Yeah, I like him. Hey! Forget the dishes. What's going on? Tell her so she'll understand why you're gonna die. Cooley. Oh, my God. How would you like a little bite of this? <laughs> mm -mm. No way, that's all yours. Well, it's OK. I only eat the sandwich. I know. That's one of the things I like about you. <laughs> no wonder you don't gain any weight. What, you mean this? Michael, it's not how you eat, it's what you eat. I mean, look at your dish. You have a plate that's filled with nothing but salt and carbohydrates and sugar and preservatives and fat. And I have a plate that's filled with sustaining, nourishing food. And this is vitamin C, it's fresh fruit, it's iron. This is going to sustain me through the day. You sound like my doctor. Well, you can't expect to keep yourself going through a long day on nothing but a sweet roll and a cup of coffee. Are you a little worried about me? Maybe just a little. You know, you could really become a habit with me. Sounds like a Gershwin song. <laughs> Morning, Dee Dee. Judge Hayworth. How you doing, Art? <laughs> he really enjoyed that. I know he did. I hate it when that don't happens. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll get even with him next time he's in my courtroom. You promise? Mm -hmm. Where were we? Oh, unfortunately, I have to get going. I have a possible suspect on that arson fire, the one that happened over on Flower Street. Where the janitor was killed? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty unfortunate, too. I really hope this witness pulls through. I'd like to get this guy. You will. You will. In other news, convicted murderer Donald Cooley was found dead in his cell in Fenwick Prison last night. Prison authorities say Cooley took his own life, slashing his wrists with a spoon filed to razor sharpness. You may recall Cooley was convicted in the rape and strangulation murder of his girlfriend, Terry Lincoln a 17-year-old Harbor Hills High School senior. The high school cheerleader was murdered in March of 1987. Her body was found in an alley in West Hollywood. Cooley, who was 18 at the time, was given a life sentence. The young man who claimed he was innocent had to be dragged from the courtroom after his sentencing. And now the Southland weather. Oh, was that the same Douglas Cooley that you prosecuted? One of the last cases I did before I became a judge. 
Sorry to hear that happened. Yeah. Raped and murdered that girl. It's hard. hard to be sorry for him. You've got an arsonist to catch. Check, please. Mr. Levy, how you doing? Uh, I'm working on it. Everything all right? Uh, headache, a little indigestion. <laughs> An occupational hazard when you're my age. <laughs> so take my advice. Stay young. I'm going to do it. Now, look, if you're tired, we can uh, take you home and come back tomorrow, you know. Oh, no. The man who died in that fire was a friend. I want you to find who did it. Thank you very much, Mr. Levy. Now, look, when you're finished with these two books, there's two more for you. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Hi. What's up? Sorry, I'm late. I had to run a couple errands. And... Well, we're having breakfast with the judge we know. How did you know? A good detective knows everything. Yeah, and a few of them have big mouths. Now, look, you've been spending a lot of time with this fellow. You like him? Yeah, I like him. This is good. <laughs> oh, I uh, saw on the TV the report about Cooley. That was Michael's case, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. How's he feel about it? Well, you know, he said that it didn't bother him, but in reality, I think it did. So how's Mr. Levy doing on the ID? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, so far, OK. But you know what? Considering his eyesight, I, I don't put too much of faith in him being able to pick out the photograph out of the mug book, although he says if the guy's in there, he will find it. Sergeant Hunter! <laughs> Yes, Mr. Levy. This is the bum. Now, you're sure about that? You think I don't see good, huh? Oh, me? No. Good. Of course, that's him. Dean Haller, four arrests for arson, two convictions. OK, we'll get an address. Thanks, Mr. Levy. Nice boy. Hmm. Open up. Hey, what's going on here? Just shut up and turn around. Don't make any stupid moves. Hey. Get up there. Let's go. Spread them out. Yeah, what do you got in here? Oh, good. A cigarette lighter. Put your right hand behind your head. Let's go. Another reporter called for a comment on the Cooley death. I told him no comment. Good. Judge Hayworth's office. Uh, yes, he's in. One moment, please. Mr. Austin from Washington. Now, that's a call I'll take. Line two. I'm keeping both my fingers crossed. <phone rings> Judge Hayworth's office.
Any luck? <laughs> You'll like this. Howler claims he's had extensive therapy in the joint. He doesn't like fires anymore. The lab boy is over at his house right now checking it out. He's a liar. Yeah. My biggest problem here, Charlie, is getting Mr. Levy to pick Howler out of the lineup. Well, Mr. Levy's feeling a little under the weather, so I sent him home. Maybe you ought to have somebody pick him up, say, around 5. Yeah, I'll pick him up personally at 5 o'clock. Thanks. Dee Dee. Michael, what you doing here? There's some place we can talk. Sure, is anything wrong? No, everything's fine. Can we go in there? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> That's a nice surprise. <laughs> Tell me. You think I'd make a good federal judge? What? <laughs> Listen, I didn't want to say anything before because I didn't want to jinx it. But for the last three weeks, the White House has been kind of feeling me out about it. They called yesterday and offered it to me. You're kidding! <laughs> I still can't believe it myself. <laughs> they want me to fly to Washington next week for the announcement. This is great! Listen, well, so we have to celebrate. Can you get tomorrow off? Um... Well, you have to. I've already made reservations at Las Primas in La Jolla. We'll stop, get your things, drop by my place, and we'll drive out of here late this afternoon. We'll have a wonderful weekend together. I mean, come on, Dee Dee. How many times does a guy get offered a seat on a federal bench? And it doesn't mean anything if I can't celebrate with somebody I really care about. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple of days vacation time coming, so... That's quite all right. Don't fret. Have a good time. I'll pick up Mr. Levy at 5 o'clock. And if he identifies Mr. Haller in the lineup, we'll have an open and shut case. Great. Okay, my notes on the Haller investigation are on my desk. And, uh, if you need me, you know where I'll be. Las Primas? In La Jolla. Right. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Rest up. You'll need it. Well, home sweet home. All right, listen. I'm going to throw a few things in a bag, and then we'll get out of here. OK. Then we're going to go to your house and get that racket. You want me to buy you a new one? Got a sound, I'll blow your head off. Carries a gun. I'm a police officer. Just leave her out of this. What's going on, Michael? Your girlfriend wants to know what's going on. Tell her so she'll understand why you're gonna die. Tell her what happened. Tell her so she'll realize what kind of scum you are. Tell her! About a week ago, a 16 year old girl was raped and murdered in San Francisco by a drifter named. Derek Slocum. A couple of days ago, Leon came to me with this lame idea that it wasn't his brother, but the Slocum character who killed Terry Lincoln about three years ago. He wanted me to check it out. Did you? Of course I did. There wasn't anything to it. Damn liar. Newspaper in San Francisco said the girl was raped and strangled with a bicycle chain, just like Terry I Lincoln. Talked to the medical examiner. He wasn't even sure the murder weapon in San Francisco was a bicycle chain. Now, damn it, Cooley, think! You can't believe that one incident in San Francisco makes your brother innocent. You're dead, Hayworth. Now, wait a minute. Maybe it is possible. 
Maybe this guy up north is the killer. Now look, I can contact the DA's office in San Francisco and I can find out. It's too late, lady. My brother's already dead. If this guy up north is guilty, then at least your brother's death would be vindicated. If it was my brother, I'd do it. You gotta at least let me try. Come on, let me make the call. We're talking about your brother. Let me at least try. Make the call. Uh, San Francisco, the number for the district attorney's office, please. Thank you. Recording after hours. We can call back in the morning. We'll wait till morning. Mr. Levy. Mr. Levy, Sergeant Hunter. Mr. Levy. Mr. Levy. Aren't you having anything? Gun pointed at my head sort of eliminates my appetite. There's dishes in the glass cabinet. What is it with this guy? He's got nothing decent to eat in the house, but he got plenty of dishes. This guy's got everything anybody could want, but he didn't have the time to see if my brother was innocent. Maybe he wasn't. Listen to me. I've been in trouble most of my life. I've been in the joint twice already. One time for armed robbery, one time for shooting a guy. I've done a lot of bad things, but I'm not proud of it. That's why I made sure that Douglas wouldn't end up like I did. All we ever had was each other. But he ain't never been in trouble. You know, he had a scholarship to the college he went to. And I've seen a lot of punk killers in the joint, but not Douglas. He would never kill anybody. Yeah, well, the jury thought he did. They were wrong! Don't you think I know that every guy in the joint cops to being innocent? I did it myself. But Douglas was innocent. Why do you think he killed himself? Because when I told him that that boyfriend of yours in there wasn't interested in the San Francisco murder, he just kind of lost all hope. It's like he couldn't hang on anymore. Man, I should have known that. Look, you bought your boyfriend some time. But if you don't come through for me, I'm going to kill him. You understand that? Now, let's go.
Time to eat, Your Honor. I have to untie him. Why don't you feed him? Now look, Cooley. Look, why don't you just eat? It's gonna be a long night. I just heard about Mr. Levy. It's a damn shame. Yeah, he was a very nice old gentleman, John. Mm, he sure was. I hate to say this, but without him, Howler may just walk. No, I know. I was just going through McCall's notes. There's a list of people who saw the fire. There's one note here. A. Ochoa. Possible. I think maybe it's an eyewitness. I don't know. I've got McCall's number in San Diego. I thought I'd give her a call here. Judge Hayworth's room, please. Oh, Judge Hayworth is not here as yet. They're not? Would you care to leave a message? Hmm. Yes, uh, could you have Sergeant McCall call Sergeant Hunter tonight as soon as they get in? It's very important. Yeah, she has a number. We'll do that for you, sir. Thank you. You're not there yet? Traffic down there is murder. Give it time. Just keep trying. Get the dishes. Sit down. What are you going to do? Put your hands behind your back. Now, I'm going to put your boyfriend's car in the garage, and I'm going to get me some sleep. Morning. It's time to make that call. That's for you. So you'll be alert. What about him? I like him better with his mouth shut. Make the call. Yes. <clears throat> Good morning. This is Sergeant Dee, Dee McCall, LAPD Homicide. I'd like to find out who the assistant DA is prosecuting a case involving a Derek Slocum, please. Eleanor Pearson. Uh, yes, would you ring? Thank you. Well, do you know when she'll be back? It's very important that I speak with her. Yes. Right. The case is involving Derek Slocum, right. Correct, Sergeant McCall, yeah. Yeah, please have her call me. It's urgent. 213-555-0278. Thank you. I'm getting tired of waiting. We don't have a choice. I got a choice. No, Sergeant Hunter, they wouldn't have gone to another hotel. It's the only place that Judge Hayworth would stay in La Jolla. 
You know, it might be possible that they haven't left yet. Yeah, c could you give me the judge's home phone number? 555-2078. Thanks a lot. It's got to be the call. Okay, pick it up. <clears throat> Hello? McCall, where the hell you been? I've been calling all over town for you. I thought you'd be in La Jolla by now. Yeah, hi. Uh, we got a late start, and, and uh, we just... We stayed over the night. You know how it is. Oh, couldn't wait, huh? Yeah. Get rid of him. Yeah, McCall? Yeah, I'm here. You all right? Yeah, I'm just kind of tired. Well, look, make sure you guys rest up now before you get on the freeway, you understand me? Yeah, I will. Now, look, I got a situation here. Remember Mr. Levy? Well, Mr. Levy passed away last night of a heart attack. That's awful. Yeah, now, look, I was going through your notes, and I saw a name, A. Ochoa, with a possible underneath it. Does that mean a possible witness? Yes. Uh, yeah, I thought that this guy, Ochoa, was holding something back from us, and, uh, we had Levy, so I didn't push it. I figured that this guy was illegal because he had one of those ESL textbooks, so I, I thought he was probably studying for his English lessons for amnesty proceedings, you know? But listen, I'm sure that he will cooperate. I know the guy will cooperate. Well, good, because that's the route I'm going to have to go now. So I'll follow up on that. And in the meantime, uh, have a good time. Thanks. Bye. Bye. I know the DA's going to call. Don't even think about it. Feeling any better? I could use a couple aspirin. I have some aspirin in my purse. Nobody's going anywhere where I can't see them. This is crazy. That DA from San Francisco is never calling back. This is a total waste of time. Leon, a DA will always call back a police officer. Now, we've just got to wait on her. Cooley, you know when you came to me the other day about your brother? It really bothered me. And when I came home that night, don't you think I considered going through his files? Why didn't you, man? Because I knew I wouldn't find anything. Michael, are the, are the files here in the house? What? Are they here in the They're house? In my study, why? We can look through the transcripts of your brother's trial and see if they missed anything. Dee Dee. Uh, it's possible. I don't think so. I do. Hunter. Captain told me you might be down here. Any luck on a Choa? Oh, yeah, I checked out this guy's home address. It was a hot dog stand. Oh, jeez. You know, look, McCall said the guy was taking English classes. Now, there must be over 300 English classes given in Los Angeles. I say we start with the ones within a five-mile area of the fire. You got it. This is a waste of time. Don't you get it yet, man? Your friend here is the only thing keeping you alive, so shut up. Now, here's something. Apparently, there was a discrepancy in the time that Terry Lincoln left your brother's garage on the night that she was killed. Well, that's totally immaterial. The girl's blood was found all over the inside of his brother's car. He told you how that happened, man. He was doing some body work, and she cut her hand on a sharp edge. Well, now, wait a minute. In the uh, medical report, it says that, uh... They found a gash on Terry Lincoln's right hand. It happened during the struggle with him. What about the bicycle chain that she was strangled with? You know, it never did prove it was Douglas's. That's right. They didn't find any prints on it, and they couldn't trace it back to the original owner. That's because it was stolen. My brother never stole anything his entire life. I made sure of that. Uh, Leon, why do you think that Terry Lincoln was at your brother's garage? Dee Dee. It's all right there in the transcripts. Terry Lincoln went to his brother's house to break up with him. That never was true, man. OK, look, they had a couple of arguments, but she really liked Douglas. Look, I don't care what they said in your courtroom. I know how the deal really went down. She went over there that night. She cut her hand. Douglas helped her bandage it. She went home at 10.30. Next thing we knew, she was dead. 
Well, then why wasn't there a bandage on her hand when the body was found? It could have fallen off in the struggle. No, they searched the site completely. There was no bandage. This all came out in the trial. You got an answer for everything, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Any word on that Ochoa guy? Oh, no, I'm waiting to hear from Shire. Well, Haller is going to escape. If you guys don't find him, we can't hold him another 12 hours. His lawyer is breathing down the DA's neck. And I'm sure he's breathing down your neck, too. Who says life's fair? Yeah. Thanks, Captain. Under homicide. This is all legal garbage, man. We're getting nowhere, lady. I haven't even gone through half the files yet. Nothing in it. Leon, I know how much you cared about your brother, but you gotta face the facts. He was guilty. Shut up! Shut up! Killing us isn't gonna change the facts, Leon. I didn't convict your brother. A jury did. I just laid out the facts. I did my job. That's what happened after, man. You wouldn't listen to me. I told you that guy in San Francisco, Derek Slocum, he did it! You don't know that. Hello? Yes, this is Sergeant McCall. Thank you for calling me back. Well, how long is Miss Pearson going to be in court? This is urgent. I don't want you talking to no DA's assistant. I think this is the best we can do right now. Yeah. Hi, I was wondering if you could answer some questions for me concerning a suspect in a case. His name is Derek Slocum. Hunter, good news. I picked up Ochoa at an ESL class about three miles from the factory. Yeah, was, and she's willing to testify that Howard set the fire. That's great news. But what do you mean, uh, she? Ochoa's a he. Oh, you must have got your signals crossed, pal. Ochoa's a woman. The A, it stood for Alejandra. Alejandra! I apologize for the confusion. It's just that I was led to believe that you were a man. Uh, now, you're sure that you gave my partner your full name the night of the fire? Of course, but she was writing very fast in her book. Oh, I see. Uh, now, tell me how you know this is the man that started the fire. I saw him. We both did. Poor Mr. Levy. <laughs> Said. Just a very nice man. But that night, we, we heard the noise, and, and we saw this man running away with a can of gasoline. Now, what were you doing in Mr. Levy's office late that night? I told the lady, your partner. Sergeant McCall. Mm-hmm. I told her, oh, after hours, Mr. Levy's been teaching me to be a seamstress but no one knows about it. Your partner, she said that Mr. Levy saw this man and, and that that may be enough. She could see that I was, I was very afraid. I understand. Okay, Alejandra, I want to thank you for coming in. Now, I'm going to put you with uh, Detective Shire so he can take your official statement. Betty? Take her to Detective Shire, please. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you, thank you very much. That was Ochoa? I thought McCall said it was a man. Yeah, I was led to believe it was a man. But the funny thing is, on the telephone, she had the perfect opportunity to tell me it was a woman, and she didn't. Something's wrong. Yeah, real wrong. And what was that name again? Lieutenant Mozak, Houston PD. Thank you. Yeah, and when Miss Pearson comes back in, please have her call me. Thank you very much. I thought you said you talked to the medical examiner. I did. Well, the M.E. says that that girl in San Francisco was strangled with a bicycle chain. His findings were inconclusive. Didn't you have the slightest bit of doubt in your mind? You could have looked into Douglas's case, man. Give him some hope. I told you what prison was doing to him. I told you he couldn't take it. You don't re-examine a case with that kind of evidence. 
had DA mentioned a girl in Houston who also got strangled with a bicycle chain. Uh, she also mentioned some cop, uh, uh, Mozak, Lieutenant Mozak, calling. Lieutenant Mozak comes back. Please have him call me right away at that number. Thanks very much. Not a word. Get over here. Who is this guy? Looks like a cop. It's my partner. Stay right there. Okay. Yeah, thanks very much. You're very helpful. Hey, Greenberg. Yeah. You arrested a guy named Doug Cooley about three years ago? Yeah. Did you hear what happened to the kid? Oh, yeah. You have a brother? Yeah. Leon. Why? This is Sergeant Dee Dee McCall, LAPD Homicide, calling again for Lieutenant Mozak. Correct, this is the second call. He's not in, but you're expecting him back shortly. When he does return, please have him call me at that number. This is urgent. Thank you. Thanks, bye.
That curtain was open the last time I was here. Now, I think Sergeant McCall is in there. I'm going around the side. If you don't hear from me in five minutes, come on in. I'll have my men in position in two minutes. Good. Would you take the right rear? To take the left rear, I'll key you on my rover. You stay with me. What the hell was that? Get over here! Get over here now! Please drop the gun, Cooley. Get away from that wall, cop, so I can see you. No, it's not gonna happen. You'll never make it out of here alive. Drop the gun. I don't care about getting out of here. I don't care about anything. You do care, Leon. You tipped him, didn't you? This whole thing was a put on. You don't care about clearing my brother's name at all. That's not true. I should have killed you both when I had the chance. But you didn't because you can't. You're not a murderer. I'm about to become one. gonna be all right? Yeah, he's gonna be all right. Nigel, come here. Mike, get an ambulance. Here, watch him for me. Hunter, untie me. Hello. Yes, Lieutenant, thank you for calling me back. Right. Right, Slocum. I don't understand. No, he never did. He never did tell me that. Well, I don't know why. No, that's not the way we usually do things in L.A., Lieutenant. Thank you. Thanks very much. We'll be in touch. Diddy, what's wrong? Mozak says that three months ago, his department contacted you, and you didn't do anything about it. Do you know how many telephone calls I get? This wasn't just a call. Mozak says that three months ago in Houston, a Derek Slocum was the prime suspect in the rape and murder of a 16-year-old girl, and it looked like she'd been strangled with a bicycle chain. It looked like, but they weren't sure. Mozak was familiar with the Douglas Cooley case. He told me that he called you. He told me that he told you about Slocum. He asked you on three separate occasions to send an investigative team to Houston, and you ignored it. How will you talk to her? She's got it all wrong. Mozak said they couldn't hold Slocum due to a technicality. When they finally arrested him in San Francisco, guess what they found in his possessions? A credit card belonging to Terry Lincoln's mother. I didn't know about the credit card. It's because you never bothered to check it out. Dee Dee, listen to me. Why don't you tell him to listen to you? Damn. Michael. You sent an innocent man to prison. That man is dead. You're telling me that a seat on the federal bench was more important to you than a man's life? It's nothing to see, folks. Let's break it up, OK? Let's go. You'll probably wind up doing some jail time. I'll help you any way I can. And then what? Well, that'll be up to you, Leon. You think my brother's name will ever get cleared? Well, that's up to the courts. But I think it looks pretty good. And what about him?